I, like many people, have been waiting a long, long time for the ATEM Extreme ISO G2. It was announced quite some time ago. I believe the initial delivery dates were expected to be August. It's now mid-September, but it's here. So let's take a quick look. So here it is, the ATEM Extreme G2. This isn't going to be a full in-depth review, this is just going to be a quick unboxing. That full review video will come in a few weeks time. So right away, just from the box alone, you can tell it's a little bit bigger. I'm actually recording this on a G1 ATEM Extreme, because that's been my kind of daily driver, switcher, recorder, streaming device since it pretty much came out five years ago. Anyway, the G2. So I'm guessing this is our box of plug adapters. And the first thing you'll notice is that this one comes with quite a substantial power brick. And no actual AC adapter. No actual plug socket. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be an actual plug with it. You just get this. So you need to supply your own plug, which considering how much this costs, it's a little bit disappointing. Now that's not, you know, I probably have a, a tub in the loft full of those type of adapters, but still 1800 pounds and they don't even give you the plug. That's a little bit stingy. Anyway, back to the unboxing. Ta da! Here it is. So, in the box, fairly minimalistic, we have the actual unit itself, the AC brick, the power brick, but no plug, and the usual black magic design. Gumpf, the sticker. Which, you know, I love you Black Magic Design, but no one's using these stickers. Your little welcome thing here, basically saying go to the website for the manual. And the DaVinci Resolve card. I'm still a Premier man, sorry. But, you know, it's nice to know that this is still here. But right, let's take a closer look. Here is the ATEM Extreme ISO G2. So right away it feels quite heavier, quite a bit heavier than the G1. The uh, the buttons, it's nice, um, nicer actual mechanical keys by the feel of it. You've got your T-bar here which is new and your um, control dials for the various things. This is a nice touch as well. The the fade to black button has guards next to it because I I did hit the fade to black button a few times on the um, on the G1 model. So again, this isn't going to be the full review. This is just a quick unboxing to give you an idea of what it looks like. So compared to here it is compared to the G1 model. Let's see if we can fit them both in. Yeah, just about. There we go. Yeah, so not massively bigger, but it's definitely bigger. Um, Weight-wise, feels a little bit heavier, but again, nothing nothing drastic. I think, ironically, there is, there's less buttons on the G2 than on the G1. Uh, I haven't 
even turned it on yet so I've not delved into the specifics of what each button does and doesn't do but the things that the things that made me um the things that made me want to upgrade to the G2 first of all three HDMI outs and instead of the two that comes with the G1 model now I actually use I actually use a SDI model of the G1 Extreme ISO on a weekly basis and I do use all four of those outputs so three is better than two but you know four is better than three but yeah uh, three HDMI outs is, uh, is going to be a welcome welcome addition professional audio inputs the XLR slash full jack combo inputs they are going to be a huge benefit something that was just always difficult with the G1 model was getting good audio in via these inevitably you would have to use some form of DI some form of adapter I actually make in a standard operating procedure if I'm at a job with a soundboard uh, sorry with a sound tech is to take a feed from the sound tech bring it into the XLRs into one of the cameras and just activate the audio on camera one or whatever one it was uh, whatever one it was plugged into that was my that was my go-to for for good audio on the ATM Extreme. I've actually got a, I've got a video. Um, I think it's a short that I'll link to in the comments about getting audio from the Rodecaster, which is just a camera, a uh, camera shot to my right. How to get good audio from the Rodecaster into the ATM via the XLR inputs on a camera. Now with the G2, we won't have to do that because we have professional XLR audio inputs. Another thing I'm looking forward to, the extra Thunderbolt port to feed video to and from the host computer. Uh, I've seen videos on the Blackmagic site about how that can be used for replays with DaVinci Resolve. I've not delved into that yet. We'll maybe get to that in the full review. Another exciting thing with this is it'll record to CF Express so you don't need to tie up one of your one of your USB slots with an SSD for recording. Looking forward to getting into that as well. The networking capabilities, ah, to be honest, that's not something that I use. Networking, you know, Blackmagic Cloud, that's not really part of any of my workflows, so I'm not sure if that will be something I will at least be using. I mean, I'll test it probably for the for the full review. But yeah, that's a, that's a quick look at the G2 of the ATEM Extreme. I'm hoping to do a full review of the G2 Extreme ISO. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything specific that you want to, to delve into with this model. Now, I will say right now, I have I've looked at the existing replay videos that Blackmagic have put up. Um, and I think a few other people have put up a few videos on how the replays could work with a combination of a computer running DaVinci and a, uh, and the G2 Extreme. I haven't quite got my head around that yet. I will try and utilize that. However, that's not something I can see me using in my workflow. Something that I think people will be interested in and something that I'm going to be directly comparing it to as well. The, this is, I think it was 1800 pounds for the G2 model, the G2 Extreme. So the closest competitor that I can think of that's in terms of the price point is probably going to be the Yola Box Extreme, which itself is an eight input, two out, two eight HDMI input, two HDMI output, all in one switcher. I've had this for about a week or two. I've been putting it through its paces. I'm hoping to have a separate video on this as well. You can see it as a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Um, what I will say about this, I, this isn't going to be a review for this, but I'm hoping to get one done of that also. The screen in this is beautiful. It is a beautiful, bright, responsive screen. That's the first thing you notice about the um, about the Yolo Box Extreme. But I would say this is probably the closest competitor, not the G1. The Yolo Box Extreme. I'll see if we can go out a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. We'll punch in a wee bit. Yeah, you can see the uh, the G1 model I've got over here is what I use for most of my um, most of my studio recordings and streams. But yeah, this is probably going to be the closest competitor.
for the G2 Extreme from Blackmagic. So, that's us folks. That's a quick unboxing of the ATEM Extreme G2. As I said, let me know in the comments anything specific that you were hoping to get delved into with a review video. I'm going to sit with it and use it for a few weeks, um, two or three weeks, put it through its paces and hopefully have a review for both the G2 ATEM Extreme and the YOLO Box Extreme. As I said, that's probably its closest competitor price-wise. Uh, they're both eight input switchers, but they're very different machines beyond that. And I'll get into that in the Versus video down the line. That's us folks. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more like this, and if you want to be notified when the actual full reviews and comparison videos go up, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I'll catch you in the next video.